It's time for another boot battle, this time with the two stars of the cheap Amazon Chinese made boot world. We've got the Rock Roosters in the black box corner, $120. And we've got the Golden Fox in the Craft and Green corner at $100, depending on the sale and the time of year you're looking at these. And uh, this is an important video because these are really popular with a lot of people who can't afford the higher quality work boots that need something that's reliable, they, but they still want some of the features of these higher quality boots. And the people that are buying these, especially for work, are relying on these boots for their, their literally their, to make their living. And so that's why I like doing these cheaper boots. And that's why we started focusing a little bit more on these boots for this Mocktober. And there's just so much more BS in these kinds of boots because the margins are so thin and because they, they uh, can't do it as well as some of the more expensive boots. So a lot of times there's a little junk hidden on the inside. And so I wanted to do, compare these two because there's probably a lot of you guys that have seen both these videos on the main channel where we did the Rock Roosters yesterday. And then on last Thursday, we did the Golden Foxes. And I didn't want to bog those videos down and make them 20 minutes and, and compare and contrast them. So I'll bog this video down and compare and contrast them. Contrast them. So um, I think the way we're gonna do this is basically start from the sole, work our way up, go through each of the components, compare them, which is better, which is better for which reason. And hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have plenty of information to know which of these boots is right for you based on your own application, what you wanna use it for, your, I guess your budget, they're both like a hundred bucks. But uh, yeah, I think, it'll, I think it'll be a good video. So let's start with the outsole first. Let's start with the Golden Foxes and then we'll go to the Rock Roosters in each of these. So starting with the Golden Fox, you've got this polyurethane outsole. It's it's fairly soft. I think it was a 50 Shore A. Polyurethane is allegedly more durable than rubber outsoles, but in these cheaper boots, you just don't know. It's just, it's a gamble regardless of what the material is and, and uh, how it's structured when you get down to this price range because sometimes they just completely crumble and fall apart when you start wearing them. Other times they're really durable and last a long time. With this particular outsole, I think it's gonna be, it's gonna last a decent amount of time. It doesn't feel really crumbly. Like I can't take chunks off of it like I could on like the Portland leather outsole that was really cheap. So it, it should be okay. It's gonna be a little bit softer than the typical like rubber wedges, but it might not last quite as long. Versus the Rock Rooster, I believe this is a more, this is a rubber based outsole rather than the polyurethane. And rubber is a little bit more grippy in certain situations. It's a little more heavy. Um, Depending on the compound, it could last longer, it could be uh, less durable. But between the two of these, if I were to choose an outsole for general purpose, I would just still go with the Rock Roosters rubber because it is a Vibram outsole. I still am not sure how they get the Vibram outsoles with the little yellow thing on there and, and still have this be a $120 boot. But it is a Vibram outsole at the end of the day. And I would trust that over a self-branded Golden Fox outsole. I guess what I'm trying to get at is there's a lot more cheap polyurethane outsoles out there than blown rubber outsoles. So I think the Rock Rooster is probably a better outsole. Then if we move up to the slip sole, something we didn't even cover in those videos, both of these have a, a rubber slip sole. The Golden Fox is a really thin and a really hard rubber slip sole. And it's honestly, it's not like a lot of people are gonna be resoling these. You know, I think if people are going to resole these, it'll be kind of a home DIY resole or a friend that knows how to do it can do it for you. Cause if a resole costs you 75 bucks and these boots cost $96, it's like most people are just gonna spend an extra 20 bucks to get a brand new pair rather than having them resold, especially as we get to some of these more internal components. So compare that to the Rock Rooster, a little bit thicker. It's actually rubber. It has like, it kind of looks like a, it's like a cow texture. There's like little chunks of darker rubber. So it must be some sort of recycled rubber, but it is a higher quality material compared to the the golden foxes. The, re the reason you might want a higher quality midsole is if you do resole these, this thinner, cheaper one could split and fall apart and then you have to go much deeper into the resole process versus a higher quality slip sole or midsole. It should stay together as you peel the outsole off and you just glue a new one on and you're good to go. Moving up to the inside filler material. So on the golden foxes, you have a foam filling material. You know, it's, it's better than nothing but it's still foam at the end of the day. It's gonna probably compress a little bit faster. It might wear out and start falling apart, but for a hundred dollar boot, it's exactly what you'd expect. Compared to the Rock Rooster, which was a little bit surprising because you get a real cork uh, midsole or filler material, which most of the time you don't even see that until you start to get in that $200 price range. So it's pretty surprising to see that. 
but the reason it, they can do it at such an affordable price is it's just it's just a sheet of cheap cork. You know, you can buy like big rolls of cork. It's not like they hot pressed the cork into the the cavity to make it fit perfectly. It's just a it's just a cut out piece of cork that they threw in there, and you can tell that by the big void at the toe, the big void at the heel, and, and honestly. If, if we had all the b-roll for this i'd pull this out just to show you so we'll probably put it in the b-roll but it's just a thin piece of pre-cut cork what would i prefer out of the two i think i'd still lean towards the cork but honestly the difference between the two at this price range you're, you're not going to feel much of a difference they're probably both going to bottom out and you're probably going to have kind of a lumpy boot and like the sidewalls are going to be higher than the in towards the middle of the boot so Technically, cork has the edge on that, but I could see an argument either way. Next, let's go to the welt. So both of these, surprisingly, are, are true Goodyear welts. I did not think that both of them were going to be when we first cut it in half, because most of the time when you see these $100 boots that look like they're Goodyear welted, they're, they're a fake Goodyear welt, and they're just made to look higher quality than they actually are, and you can literally just rip them apart. Kind of like the Portland leather boots, the Brunt boots. There's a bunch of these boots in this category that just really hawk a bunch of BS and try to disguise it as something that it's not. And fortunately, both these boots have a true Goodyear welt. And you know, it's the Goodyear welt is better than cemented in a lot of ways above and beyond just resoling because a lot of people talk about that, including me, like, oh, it allows you to resole these boots. But it is a lot stronger of a construction because you have this big stitching and thread holding all these in, in, uh, integral parts together instead of just gluing them together and hoping that the glue holds together. It's gonna be a lot harder to break a big piece of thread than it will be to delaminate some glued components. And so even for the, do the durability and the longevity of the boot, a Goodyear welt is better most of the time. There's an argument to be made that the direct injected boots at this price range might be better but not the cemented boots, because there's a difference there. With the direct injected, it's liquid hot foam that is poured into the cavities of the boot and it, and it seals and binds all the little nooks and crannies together and makes a really strong adhesion to the components of the boot versus just a regular cemented boot. It's literally just a component layer of glue, next component layer of glue, and so it just delaminates fairly easily, especially the cheaper boots. But as for which is a better, well, the Golden Fox is a synthetic welt which can split and crack. It doesn't look as nice. Um, when it comes to resoling, if you actually did resole these, it's there's a chance that they're gonna have to sew on a new welt if it did split and crack, which is gonna increase the cost of the resole. And at that point, it's gonna cost you more than a brand new pair. Versus the Rock Rooster, that, the, the Rock Rooster really surprised me that they could actually sell this boot for this price and at this, at this at these quantities, because it's a popular boot, because it has a true leather Goodyear welt. And it does have that fake stitch like we talked about in the cut in half video, but it's a true Goodyear welt with a true leather welt for 120 bucks. It's kind of crazy. So basically all the cons of the synthetic welt are the pros of a leather welt where it's not gonna split as easily, the resoles are gonna be cheaper because there's a good chance they're not gonna have to sew a new welt on. And so out of the two of them, clearly the Rock Rooster is a better Goodyear welt and a better welt material. Then going back to the inside for the lasting board, so both of these are just cheap lasting material. You know, they're, they're not even like the, the, the typical Texan fiberboard that's that pink fiberboard that's in a lot of popular $250 boots and under. They're both just like really cheap fiberboard. Out of the two of them, the Golden Fox is a little bit cheaper. It's it's a lot more airy and almost foamy of a fiberboard compared to the Rock Roosters is a little more substantial and a lot closer to your typical fiberboard. So the Rock Rooster is a better fiberboard. And will it make a difference in how these wear and the longevity? It might, but they're both so cheap that it's hard to say, honestly. <laughs> like they're both really cheap lasting boards and the lasting or the, the fiber boards known to split and crack over time, especially you, if you use these for a really long time. So about the same, honestly. Out of the out of the two of the lasting boards, which one's gonna last longer? I would I would bet that the Rock Roosters is a little bit better quality, but it's, it's hard to know, especially with these cheaper materials. But you can see they both have that internal Blake stitch-ish stitch that's holding the gimming to the lasting board, which is a really nice touch for a cheaper boot. Because that's the thing I appreciate about both these boots, because it's almost like they realize, like, well, these are cheap materials. There's probably some stuff that might delaminate, fall apart. Let's throw a redundant stitch in there to at least make sure that they're gonna last one full use of this boot. So I was surprised that both of them had that. Then if we go to their insoles, <laughs> these insoles are so ridiculous. So the 
Golden Fox, just a typical insole. You know, it's it's not bad by any means. I've seen way worse insoles in Nikes and sneakers and some of the bigger boot brands compared to the Golden Fox, not bad. You compare that to this memory foam mattress that you're standing on for the, the Rock Roosters. This thing is so thick, it's so squishy. It's like, it's almost like one of those little stress balls. You can sit here and play with it. And I, I was doing that when I was writing the scripts. I was just over here like stressing out, squeezing this thing because it's, it's just all memory foam and it feels so weird underfoot. It feels good, but it kind of feels like you're walking in sand. And I don't know how that would perform over like an eight hour work day. Uh, where you're standing on your feet all day. I don't know if it's gonna bottom out. So between the two, the safer bet is honestly the Golden Fox's insole. I just don't know what to expect from this thing. And it's, it might be more comfortable, but the, the beauty of both of these is if you hate these insoles, you can put whatever insole you want in the inside. You can buy another insole for more arch support. You can buy something that's more durable. If this is too much squish for you, you can throw a different insole in. But between the two, I would say, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. The better one, I might lean towards a rock rooster, but the safer bet is the, the Golden Fox. Then if we look at the lining of these boots, the Golden Fox is just a, it's, it's like a sneaker material lining. You see this material a lot in Nikes versus the rock roosters there. They call it the Cool Max lining. It's supposed to have some properties that makes it moisture wicking, makes it better for wearing. It's hard to say if that's true. Out of the two of them, which one's gonna be more durable? I think the Golden Fox is actually gonna be more durable, but the Rock Rooster, you might get some of those benefits. It's hard to say, but ultimately, the that vamp lining isn't a huge deal unless it's a really cheap one. So it's hard to say which one's better. Then for the rest of the lining up the shaft, like I said in these videos, I hate these fabric liners in cheap boots because they just use really cheap material. You wear through it and then all of a sudden you're wearing into your counter, you got a flap on the inside. So the fact that the Rock Rooster doesn't have a lining through the shaft of the boot and has a dedicated counter cover, much better. I prefer that 10 times out of 10 because it's just, it's not gonna stink as much, it's not gonna be as hot, it's not gonna wear out. It's just better in basically every way. And I don't, I'm not sure why these brands put such cheap linings in their boots. I'd rather just not have one. And that kind of brings us to another big difference between these two boots. And that's this really cheap foam in between the lining and the upper. It just is crumbled. As soon as we cut it apart, like crumbs start coming out and it's not gonna last longer than like two wears because it is just some cheap bottom of the barrel foam. You can see it flaking off. I hate that. <laughs> it's, it's a terrible material to throw in there. I don't know why they did that. So huge lead on the that for Rock Roosters. And then as for the counter, uh, material. Uh, this, the, the, the Golden Fox is, is almost like your typical pink Texan fiberboard that we'd usually see in the insole, but it's in the counter. And then for the Rock Rooster, you have a, a more stiff cellulose counter and they've upgraded it from the more fragile counter they had before. So the Rock Rooster is going to give you more support. It might be a little bit more durable. It might take a little bit more longer to break in, but overall the Rock Rooster is a better counter and it's got the counter cover and doesn't have that cheap lining through the upper. Then if we start looking at the outside of the boot, just aesthetically out of the two of them, I think I like the Golden Fox a little bit more. It's a little more subtle. I hate that little rivet there. I don't know why cheap brands do that. I think it just looks cheap. Um, and I, I like the eyelets more than the Rock Roosters. I don't like these new eyelets Rock Roosters doing with Rock Rooster written all over every single piece. Like too much branding on a product is, is worse than no branding on a product. And that is too much in my opinion. As for maybe the biggest and most important component of this entire boot, the leather, which is better out of the two? Well, the, the Golden Fox leather is a shockingly high quality leather for a $98 boot. It has pull up, so you know it has a good amount of conditioners and compounds worked into it. It has plenty of the grain, it's two millimeters thick. It's a, it is honestly a very beautiful leather. I wouldn't say this boot looks like it's a high quality boot, but the leather itself looks like it's a two or $300 boot leather, if not $400. It's, it's, it's a surprisingly good leather. Versus the Rock Rooster, this is that tumbled leather we talked about. It's gonna be really malleable, really soft. It's not gonna have hardly any break in period. It's a little bit thicker than the Golden Foxes, but it doesn't have that same look. You know, it's got a pigment layer on top and it's tumbled so you get that little pebbled look. And I don't think it's a fake pebble print. It might be, but it definitely, these two leathers look vastly different to me. Like this looks like a high quality heritage leather. This looks more like a cheap work boot leather. And so, uh, looks wise, I much prefer the, the Golden Fox leather. I think it is honestly a pretty good looking leather. Um, 
ver versus the rock rooster. It's gonna be durable, it's gonna be really flexible, but it just doesn't have that same look. So I, I like the golden fox better. For work, you might want the rock roosters because it's not gonna give you that, like every, basically everything we talked about. This might just be better for work. So now that we've gone through all the details, which boot do I prefer? Which boot is better? Well, just on the surface, which is the better boot across the board? The Rock Rooster is a better boot. It is $20 more, and when you get to these price points, that's a 20, well, it's like an 18% increase of the price compared to the Golden Fox. Is that $18 so much that I, I think people are gonna wanna save 18 bucks or 20 bucks to, to go with the Golden Foxes? I don't think so. So if you're looking for a dependable, reliable, affordable mock toe boot, the Rock Roosters are tough to beat. They're, they're gonna be a good, reliable boot, especially for this price point. It's still nothing compared to a $300 boot, but this really shines compared to all the other boots in this price range. As for a first cheap heritage boot to try these style out, see if it fits with your style, if you're comfortable in it, if you like the style of boot, if you like the way it wears and how it feels on foot, and you don't wanna spend three or 400 bucks out of the two of them, I think I'd go with the Golden Fox. I love the leather, I think it's a beautiful leather, it's gonna age really nicely, it's gonna be durable. It has a more casual look to it, like the Rock Roosters to me look a lot more like a big chunky work boot, whereas the Golden Foxes look a lot more like a casual workwear style boot. There are some pretty clear issues with this boot that might dissuade some people. The main one being that terrible foam backing that's crumbling. I don't think it's gonna be enough to where it's gonna be ruin the wearability of the boot. It might be a little obnoxious, but it's a hundred bucks. And you don't get the leather weld, you don't get the rubber outsole. But if you're just getting a, a first try boot, you know, testing out the market and you don't wanna spend a ton of money, this will give you a look, it'll give you the feel and it'll, it'll inform you if you want to invest in something a little bit more expensive. I think it's a good option. I really, I think a lot of people for hundred bucks are gonna be happy with that. Is there better boots out there for more money? Yeah, pretty clearly. You know, we're just comparing these two boots, but if you have some more money to spend, your money's better spent on some like Carolinas, some Thorough Goods. Um, if you're wanting a traditionally made boot, that is, you know, they're, they're a traditional boot that's better built for a little bit more money. Uh, Danners are a little bit better for a little bit more money, but buy a little bit more money. I mean, literally twice the price of these boots. So you could end up buying one of each of these to try them for the price of one of the higher quality boots. And that's why I think people really like these more affordable reviews because not everyone has the luxury of buying $600 work boots, $300 work boots, or even $200 work boots. Some people just need something that they know they can rely on and depend on to make the money they need to, to literally survive. And that's why I go so hard on some of these brands that just are hawking BS to the people who need the boots the most. And I like to highlight some of these more affordable boots that do it pretty well for the price. So let me know what you guys think. Um, I like doing these, they're fun. You know, it's, it's a good way to add some supplementary content to the main videos, especially where these, these cheap boots don't get a lot of attention on the main channel. So we have to keep them pretty tight and concise and, and uh, uh, information packed without being like a 20 minute dialogue on a boot that not a lot of people, I don't, know, I don't even know what it is. It's more just like, there, there's not as cool of a story behind these. There's not as much intrinsic value or perceived value of them. And so the, the videos just do better if they're short. So these longer format videos where I get to ramble and go through all the details are really fun for me to also give you guys some additional information and help you make the decision when we review multiple boots in a similar category at a similar price. Because we cut apart so many boots and shoes, it's hard to keep track of everything. And, and this is a, a good practice for me. So. Thank you guys for all your support. I think I've said thank you like five times, but it is fun. So thank you guys. See ya.